So a friend came to me recently and said they had this set up in a conference call room at their workplace and it seems to have fallen off the wall and smashed on the ground. It doesn't look too bad, but if we look real close, we'll see the DC jack there is pretty well ruined. The USB port looks okay, luckily, but it did come with this cable, which, well, you can see what happened there. So I'm going to pull it apart and see if I can fix it. Hopefully it's just the power plug that's the problem, but we'll find out as we get further in. If we take a look at the back side here, we'll see that the back plate is held together using Torx screws. So I'll grab a screwdriver and start working on them. In this case, they're all pretty easily accessible. It doesn't seem like there's any hidden screws. Although I will feel underneath the sticker just in case I can feel a screw indent. Nope, that seems fine. I'll take off the bracket too, just to get that out of the way. Probably not necessary, but it doesn't hurt. And in fact, it revealed two more screws. I'll just feel around with the pry tool and see if we have any plastic clips holding it down. Can't feel anything for now. Making sure to only dip the corner of the tool in so I don't accidentally slice any cables. Got it. Oh yep, yeah, that, that power plug is pretty broken. Looks like I'll have to take out the PCB and do a resolder with a new part. I always find it strange when companies make products like this that use two different types of screw head. Like we've got Torx for the outside and now suddenly Phillips head for the inside. Why not keep it the same? It'll be easier to fix. You only need one screwdriver. And I will carefully remove this cable. This would be very fragile so don't want to cut that by accident. Oh, missed one more screw here. Get that. That bent power pin on the TC jack is actually holding in the board now. But we can just bend it back out of the way. Something's holding this in place. Ah, oh, here we go. You're still holding on. Careful. There we go. Now there's a cable underneath. I can feel that. Yep, ribbon cable there. I'm just going to put that to the side for now. Then we can get a closer look at the board underneath. Let's carefully remove the antenna connection. And carefully peel up this tape here, making sure we don't pull any components off with it. And now we'll carefully undo these screws here. A common mistake that beginners make when making repairs like this is not being aware of cables that are attached to the underside of the board like this. If you pulled out the circuit board with too much force and didn't think about these cables, you could rip that connector right off and that would be an absolute pain to try and fix. In some cases it might not be fixable at all and then you'd just have to throw it in the bin. Now, how do we get that board out of there? I see a few more screws down here that I can undo. So let's start with that. It actually surprises me how easy this device is to repair so far. Many devices these days have plastic clips and one-way connections that break when you try to undo them. But this is all screws and everything just slots in nicely. Well done, Logitech. Oh, here we go. So let's see if it comes out now. Ah, look at that, perfect. Now I'm just being careful, there could be some wires still attached. And yes, there are. We have three wires underneath. So once again, I'm gonna remove them. This one should just pull out. And these two look a bit smaller, but also should just pull out, making sure that we don't put too much pressure on any single wire. Feed the antenna cable through this little plastic connection. Now we can take a good look at the board and see what the damage is. So we'll shift this to the side. And let's see what we got. Ah yes, that is broken. So I'm going to need to desolder this part and replace it. Oh look, it actually flexes a bit. That's not supposed to happen. Anyway, let's start desoldering. So here I've put the PCB in a circuit board clamp holder and I'm going to apply some flux to the back side of the board 
where the solder joint is so that it cleans up nicely while I'm applying the soldering iron. Always good to use a bit of extra flux and there's no such thing as too much. At first I was hoping I could desolder the part by applying the soldering iron to all three pins at the same time, but this didn't work very well. I just couldn't quite seem to get enough heat into all three pins to release the component. And I didn't want to turn the temperature up because I didn't want to burn anything. Next I tried to remove the old solder using solder wick, but this also didn't work very well. It seemed like it wasn't flowing very nicely. Finally, I managed to get the part out by applying the soldering iron to one or two legs at a time and just pulling out the broken pieces of the connector bit by bit. Then I was able to clean up the rest of the joint using solder wick. I also cleaned all the flux residue off the PCB pads using isopropyl alcohol and a cotton tip. I did this until the surface was clean. And there's the bits and pieces of this connector. You can see it's totally disintegrated on the way out. So I'll get a replacement part for that and get it installed. Okay, it's a few days later and I've bought some spare parts. Now I'm going to replace that part that we removed. Now originally I bought this one, which actually fits the old plug pack fine. But then when I went to install it, it doesn't fit this very well. It's too big. So I had to buy a different spare part. Now I have this one. Turns out there's a few different sizes of these things. So that fits that. And now that fits here. Now in this case, I don't have an easy way to hold this part up inside the socket from underneath. So I'm going to have to be clever and place some solder on there while I'm holding it with my hand. The easiest way to do that is to pre-tin the iron just a little bit place the part in the hole, and then while pressing up with my finger from underneath, just transfer a little bit of solder onto one of the pins, and then let that cool. And now we'll do the other pins. Here I'm applying a bit of solder, and then moving the solder away, but keeping the iron there for a little while. This helps to keep it hot and get the solder to flow down the joint, so you get a strong connection all the way through the board. With that completed, we can now start reassembling the unit. So we'll feed this cable back through, and then put this board assembly back in place. We can basically do this in reverse order to how we pulled it apart. So let's reconnect all the cables on the backside very carefully. They should just clip in. And then place this circuit port assembly back in its place. All right, now we can reconnect this board. First I'll connect the cables that were attached to the underside. And this had some tape Bring it up. Okay, with the boards back in place, now it's a good idea to plug it in and test it before we put the back cover back on. Otherwise, we might find that we completely reassemble it and then it doesn't work and we have to pull it all apart again. So I've plugged in the other end of this power cord and now I'm going to carefully rest it here and plug it in and see if it responds. Sounds pretty good, making noises. The camera's moving around looking for something. Seems like a success to me. Now let's put it all back together. So unplug it first and now we can put the back plate back on. Usually it's a good idea to do opposite corners first so that you get a fairly even spread as the back plate screws down. In this case it probably doesn't matter too much but it's just good practice. So that's the fix for the Logitech conference camera. After I finished putting all the screws in, I returned it to my friend who plugged it in and said it worked perfectly. If you liked this video, hit the like button below and if you want to stay up to date with other cool projects, repairs, builds, interesting tips and tricks, things I do, hit the subscribe button. Cheers!